How's it going, everyone? My name is Pat with the Diabetes Manager Group, and today I'm going to show you how to change the wound dressings and some alternatives to help improve either a diabetic ulcer uh, recovery or post-surgical recovery or anything that has wounds that needs to improve their healing. Uh, I'm a student physical therapist, and wound care is a part of our curriculum. And I will say, too, make sure to talk with your medical provider or your surgeon or anyone else before attempting anything that I'm mentioning in this video because everyone's injury is personalized and there's so many other factors and conditions that are going on. But I'm just going to share what works for me and if it works for you after you've cleared it with your healthcare provider and such, feel free to go ahead and try it out. Okay, so to start things off, I got a reusable bandage. So to use this, I just wrap it around, make sure I have it and a appropriate amount of tightness. And then here are these uh, latches to help secure it. Uh, this bandage as well, whenever one is washing it, they could either wash it with cold water under the sink and using dish soap and make sure to let it air dry, or they could put it inside of their washing machine, make sure to put that on cold on low tumble setting and let it air dry or put into the dryer at a low or no air setting and light tumble so that it doesn't ruin the elasticity of this to keep it tight and wrapped. Other things too, since my wound is recovering very slowly, I am going to be using a honey gel. So honey has been shown to have antibacterial properties and improve and promote wound healing. Again, please check with your doctor if this is something that could work with you. And there are other brands that might have honey creams or honey other things. But those things I would not recommend because creams, they're not as moisture retention compared to gels. So I highly recommend utilizing a gel. I'm not sponsored by anyone but just sharing what I'm utilizing to help for myself with my wound. And then gauze pads, you could utilize this as a top one. Things to keep note of is if someone has a scab or something to put on top of this, I would not recommend this because it can stick. And whenever someone needs to change up their uh, dressings, then this could actually scrape. This could actually cause some of the scab to come off and making the wound even worse and making it prolonged for a recovery because scabs are like a natural body's bandage to keep it protected. So instead, I got these non-stick pads or non-inherent pads. These are also called Teflo pads. These can actually help prevent the pads or the gauze from sticking onto the wound whenever it's bleeding to try and create that scab in order to promote the healing process. So this can help out a bunch. Other things, since I had a small pressure ulcer on the back of my heel, uh, I'm using a heel pad, which uh, someone can get this on Amazon. And then you could always cut this out to make it fit towards your heel as appropriately. For the sake of my purposes, I don't cut it out because it's just right for myself. And then if someone is not able to clean up their uh, feet at all, things that I would use is some baby wipes to help clean that up, get rid of some of the smell because I can't wash it appropriately in order to keep the wound protected. So there's that. Things about baby wipes, though, is that they do not have antibacterial properties. Keep in note of that whenever one is using that to clean. So if anything is dirty or unsanitary, make sure to uh, use other products in order to address that. And then before utilizing all of this and putting it on, make sure to wash your hands with soap and water so that it's an easier time with cleaning it, putting it on, and not risking any infections that can occur. Okay, so for this next part of the video, this will show the open wound that I had when I got ankle surgery to uh, fix my dislocated and fractured foot. So if you get queasy by blood or by graphic images, I would recommend you end this video here and look for something else. But if it doesn't bother you and you're interested in looking at how it can help, then I'm just going to go ahead and unwrap my bandage. And then you can see that there's some blood built up from here. Specs of it. And then always have some sort of bin or something to put the uh, used dressings or bands or any infectious stuff out of the way to keep it sanitary. The heel pad. Fortunately, my pressure ulcer on my heel or over here has been getting better. I'm just using it more to provide comfort whenever I have to use my boot because sometimes my boot doesn't have enough cushion for my heel and then time to remove this make sure one is slow to remove it because the rough part is if you move it off too fast 
it can remove the scab formation and make it worse. There's my wound over there. And then this is what happens when someone doesn't have the non inherent gauze. Parts of the scab comes off whenever they need to change out their dressings and delays the healing process. So don't make my mistake. So I'm going to toss that over to the side over there. Make sure I have the sterile ones over here. Then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the baby wipes. So new out of the bag to just clean parts of my foot that has not been cleaned before, or it has been cleaned in the past, but just a bit smelly. So I'm just going to do a gentle rub for everything. And then also someone has uh, type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, an important thing is to check in between the toes to ensure no pressure ulcers are between the toes. If you need a mirror to help that out, or if you need to have a friend or family member help you do that, then go ahead and try that. So for me, since I'm a clean guy, I'm just going to make sure that this is all cleaned up. Yes, I'm doing this with one hand just because the thing that was holding my camera is not able to hold it. Switching hands. Make sure that I get the other part of my foot all cleaned up. And then you can throw it into the trash can when it's close. Or for myself, I'll just put that right there and I'll just disinfect everything off my countertop once it's all done. So now that's clean, make sure the foot is dry. And whenever someone is washing their foot and they're able to shower with it, then I highly recommend getting an air dryer and using the air dryer to blow up the feet on a warm and low uh, setting. If not, using a cold and low setting will be helpful. Doing it too fast can compromise the newly developed skin or other stuff. So you want to make sure that you are smart about that. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm going to open this up. So let's see if I can do it with one hand. Nope, can't do it with one hand. All right, we'll just open this here. And then make sure you get a container where the thing is sealed so that when you open it up, it's not going to be contaminated with everything else or tampered with. So the thing with the honeys, this thing cost me about 10 bucks on CVS. You could always find other brands or other products that is works for you. But since I'm on a tight budget, I decided to go for these brands offered by CVS or Walmart. There's nothing wrong with those brands. Okay, this just sucks. Ripped off the handle part, so I just have to tear this off. Give me one second. All right, I was able to finally open up the honey. I'll set that to the side. I'm going to get one of these non-stick pads so that I can put the medical grade honey on here and then just tear this up, put it on. Sometimes the barbaric way is the way to go. Yep. There we go. Then what I want to do is apply the honey onto here. It's a little stiff. You don't need a whole lot, but once you have that, what I like to do is change that up so that it is covering more surface area. And then <laughs> camera. And I just like to put it side by side. Is this enough honey to cover the surface area of my wound? Judging by the looks of it, it's probably not. So I'm just going to add a little bit more honey onto here. All right, I put some more honey on here, and it looks like it's about enough. Other things that one can do is you can actually put the honey directly onto the wound if you'd like. So put a little bit, put a little bit on the wound like this. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then I would use my other free hand to put it on there, but one's carrying the camera, so I'm just going to pause this for a second and put it on. All right, so with it, what I just did is I just got some, put some on there. 
The major thing is make sure you're not compressing it down to smear it because that might cause more injury to the newly made tissues or the skin. So make sure you apply it as needed. Then afterwards, I'll just put the one with the honey onto my foot, just like that. Enough compression for that is on there. Next thing I'm going to put, now that the non-adherent gauze is on there, I'm going to go in with the uh, regular gauze to put it on top. So this acts as the non-stick barrier. This acts as a way so if there's too much uh, excess moisture that comes out, this can help absorb it up. If blood bleeds through this, it can collect inside this gauze pass. And I'm just going to put that on right now. And you can just layer on the top just like that. So now that is done, the next step is to apply the heel pad. And I generally put it on the back over here. And then I would wrap it around with the bandage. So let's fast forward to look at that. And this heel pad, I just got it off of Amazon. Some CVSs might have it or Walmarts might have it, but make sure you find the correct one. See how that just fits on my heel, just like that. So now that is all on there together. Time for me to wrap this up. Okay. So you're just going to put that on. Here with the bandage it's up here and make sure that it's not through the side over here so it doesn't fall on. Pull this thug wrapped over, just like heel pad. Keep covering the wrinkles because if you have any wrinkles on there, that can actually cause more pressure ulcers. So it's done. Make sure this water is also covered too. Does so that produce any risk of pressure ulcers? Advantage like this. And you could add the and you're all you put a sock over this, just sock has space to come over this so it doesn't creep old. Like then once you're And place it securely into your bit. Especially you block the Velcro when you put it up, because sometimes the Velcro can stick to the bandage and make it worse. Once you have it in, tuck it in. The bottom, secure the top. Get the bottom one in. Strap it in. Middle one. Strap it in. Then I get the top one over. And so drop it in like that. Okay, so that's how you would change your dressings in case you have a wound injury, whether that's a diabetic ulcer, a pressure ulcer, after surgery, or anything like that, and some recommendations that I make. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a share it with a friend or share it with anyone that you think it'd be helpful for. Comment any of your thoughts below, and feel free to let me know if you have any questions below too. All the things that I bought for myself, for the gauze, the honey, and all that stuff, it racked up to be about like $35 in total. So again, work with what your budget is, but those are the main ones that I utilize for myself. I'm not sponsored by anyone, and I'm trying to pick whichever one is the most affordable options in case someone is tied on Tash. And again, thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.